To be or not to be, whose decision is it anyway? Well, the decision is God's, obviously. He made us in his image. According to Darwin and his followers, the story is different. It started somewhere around here and went on all the way to that. Now, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I totally reject that part, but the rest kind of hurts, sitting too long in front of these machines. Now, here's Jesus saying something very important. Namely, from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Obviously, Jesus has no idea of anthropology, does he? Because it is the end of evolution this happens. Or maybe anthropology has no idea of reality. Darwin understood that what was driving this mechanism that produces evolution is natural selection. But is there something that actually drives natural selection? Why is it that it works like that? He didn't really understand, but his aha moment was when he read Malthus's essay on population, written about 100 years before him. And Malthus's main point was this, population, population tends to, tends to outstrip resources. So they will keep multiplying until there's not enough resources for everybody. So the idea is the overpopulation leads to competition. Aha, well that's the competition in which natural selection does the work. So Darwin's contribution is basically this, the fittest win that struggle. You remember that his book actually says the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. So his idea is very simple. The fittest will survive in their competition for the food. And the second one, there's no God. Nobody controls that mechanism. And this process is totally natural. And there can't be a God because there's too much evil in that fight for selection.